I'm Fazal Sheikh, and I am a photographer. In northwestern Pakistan, I was given a long letter written by a woman who had been forced to flee her home in Afghanistan. The following letter was titled, Our Plight. There has been much discussion about how Afghan women have been treated, how they have been abused, tortured, and killed. But these discussions which take place both inside and outside Afghanistan have done little to solve our lack of basic human rights. Many Afghan women look to the West in the name of freedom and expect people in the West to promote our rights. But in the West they neither consult us about the issues that affect our daily lives, nor do they uphold or promote on our behalf the standards by which they themselves live. History has taught us that a bright future is nothing but a mirage for Afghan women. The reality is tears, chained hands, and silenced mouths. Afghan mothers who have brought up brave sons and husbands are generous, loving people, but they have never succeeded in obtaining their independence. All our hopes have been consigned to the dustbin of history. Our voices have been buried without any recognition that our hands have carried swords to fight against our enemies. Now we cover our heads with veils and slave like ants carrying food to the mountains of Nuristan. In the north we were born to weave rugs, in the south to raise cattle and sheep and to clean the stables. Young girls are sold on markets like cattle and slaves. I don't mean in past centuries. The practice continues today. We are often the casualties of ignorance. It is obvious from the beginning of our lives that we should only know how to sleep, eat, defecate, procreate, and raise offspring to take our places. We have rarely known a life better than slavery. When the former Soviet Union occupied our country, they sent our girls and women to Russia in the name of higher education. These women who were indoctrinated and used for propaganda purposes were not given any religious or secular rights, and they continued to be abused, often as a commodity for men. While a few found new freedoms after being released from our own country, others soon became disillusioned and eventually returned to their homeland in shame or remained depressed in the former Soviet Union and former Eastern Bloc states. When our great Islamic revolution succeeded, we thought our day of deliverance had come. Finally, we would be free and independent. Afghanistan was released but once again women were treated as the goat in the game, pulled this way and that by one faction or another. Once again on all sides, indiscriminate bombing and rocket attacks, bullets and mines killed Afghan children in their mother's wombs. We were forced to flee with bare feet and uncovered heads to escape the killing. Some of us fled to foreign countries and became refugees, it should not be forgotten that some of us were forced to flee to Moscow for our safety. I shall never forget how so many of us spent frightened, lonely nights waiting patiently in the front line for a single loaf of bread. How many of us were abducted by armed men from Mujahideen parties in the middle of the day in busy streets. How many of us were raped. How many of us threw themselves from buildings to keep their chastity? How many of us were taken from the scorching refugee camps in Jalalabad to become a commodity for men in neighboring countries? How many widows were forced to sell themselves to feed their families? Those who have come to power, those with guns, continue to leer at us, to make fun of us, to take pleasure in harassing us. These men who think of themselves as the defenders of our faith, as our fathers and brothers sent to protect us, are the same ones who call us honey 
They say, don't come out of your bottles. The flies might touch you. The flies are the men that rush at you. Others tell us that we are live wires that must be covered. It's a pity that they don't recognize us as individuals, as fellow human beings. Over the loudspeakers, they announce that the years of holy war have simply been to cover Afghan women in Muslim dress. That, dear brother, dear father and son, I am sure was not the purpose of the holy war. What you have brought is corruption, blasphemy, and destruction. When those sincere, truthful freedom fighters entered Kabul, they married young women by force. But no one was willing to marry a widow to change her tragic life. Sisters, it does not matter to the leaders and the commanders who claim to be supporters of the Afghan nation that you may be killed by shrapnel fired by our Muslim brothers. It makes no difference to them that you don't have fuel for your lamps and spend nights in the dark while they watch satellite television. We were not born to decorate ourselves with ornaments. Our prized possessions are pens and books. We are plunging into an abyss of adversity, and neither our role in society nor our potential have ever been recognized. All we can try to do is move forward towards our freedom. There is no magic wand that will give it to us instantly. We have been ignored by our own fathers, brothers and sons, and abandoned by our sisters from outside our country, who have fought and won their own freedoms after many long and painful battles. We must wake up and make something of ourselves. We have a responsibility and duty to our offspring. How much longer must we wait? We have waited long enough. It is time to improve our lot in life and throw off the shackles that have allowed the caravan of civilization and democracy to travel far beyond us.